Well, that was the end of my expensive digital micrometer, but that's not how exactly it went dead. One day, it just decided not to wake up on me after many years of use. Trust me, I've changed the battery, probed it with a multimeter, CPR, yada, yada, yada. If you have any suggestion how I can fix this thing, please leave a comment down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Other than that, life goes on. Rather than splurge on another high-end micrometer, I wanted to find a balance, something both cost-effective and accurate. And well, if I accidentally broke it, I didn't want to shed too many tears. Enter the Dasqua 4230-25, born in Italy, raced by the world. I've actually already unboxed this, but for the sake of demonstration, I'll walk you through what the experience was like the first time I opened it up. Now, the blue plastic case it came with was a standout feature. Not only did it provide added protection for the digital micrometer, but the design itself was something to appreciate. Opening the case, there was a precise cutout for the micrometer, ensuring that it stays snug and doesn't move around when being transported. Some of the features that caught my eyes were the large reading screen, hardened spindle, carbide anvil, and of course its ergonomic design which should make for a comfy measuring. This came with a data port that looks like a USB micro. Now I wouldn't suggest using a USB cable and plug it in directly to your computer. You might end up with some unsatisfactory result. Since I'm not going to be using this feature, I will not include it in this demo. Moving on to the Digimic itself, one of the first thing you'll notice is that it comes with a pre-installed battery. For the purpose of this demonstration, I removed it so I can show you how easy it is to set it up. Now this came with a weird looking flat metal in one of the pockets. At first I thought it was some sort of a logo or a bottle opener. It's actually a flat screwdriver for removing the battery cover. Here is the battery compartment. It's conveniently located, easy to access, and designed so that you can't put the battery in the wrong way. Let's go ahead and install the battery. This also came with a ball bearing adapter. It's primarily used for measuring pipe thickness. Simply slide the sleeve to the front of the anvil, secure it in place, and you're ready to take some measurement of the pipe's wall thickness with ease. Let's get down to some nitty gritty specs. Measuring range, 25 millimeter or one inch. Graduation, a fine 0.001 millimeter or 50 millionths. Accuracy is 0.003 millimeter or one thousandths of an inch. Warranty is two solid years. And there's one thing that was not mentioned on the website is the memory recall. Have you ever turned off your micrometer worried about losing your last measurement? With this micrometer, you can power it off and when you turn it back on, it remembers your last position. No more scratching your head about forgotten measurements. Speaking of measuring, let's see how this bad boy holds up in an accuracy test. And for that, I got my trusty grade two gauge blocks here. For those unfamiliar with the term, gauge blocks are precision blocks used for calibrating measuring equipment. We will measure these blocks sequentially to determine if this micrometer reads them accurately. Since I don't have another digital micrometer to compare with this Dasqua, I'll be using a Mitutoyo digital caliper for a comparison. It's all I have, but it should do the trick. Wedge a piece of paper between the anvil and the spindle. This will clean the measuring faces. The thimble on this micrometer is a small knob and the ratchet is the larger knob, which is the opposite compared to my previous micrometer. Once there's a slight tightness, simply pull the piece of paper away. I will start with one thousandths or 0.1 inch and then sweep across the block to check for consistency. Now let's verify the accuracy using the Matatoyo micrometer. Incrementally measure larger blocks as well. This approach will not only enhance our assessment of the accuracy, but also further validate the consistency and repeatability of the micrometer.
I'll be using the half inch block once more. Then I'll reset the micrometer by pressing the ABS or absolute button. This action sets a reference point at your desired location, facilitating comparative measurements. Next, I'll stack a 0.104 inch block on top of the previous block. The micrometer will then show the variance in size between the two blocks. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. Pros of this product, it's affordable considering its features and performance, a durable protective case included in the packaging, precision measurements, extra batteries, enhanced durability and wear resistance with carbide anvil and spindle tip, and convenient features like ABS function and memory recall for easier resetting and measurement recollection. And finally, the plastic thimble and ratchet. While it might be a minor drawback, the use of plastic may affect long-term durability. However, it's worth noting that using metal components could increase the price. This should give you a comprehensive overview of the product's strengths and weaknesses. Alrighty then, we're calling it a day on this test. If you find this video useful, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for sticking around and I hope to see you again. Peace.